What's going on YouTube? Jonathan here. And for today's video, I decided to do something a little bit different. You'll see that there are no pieces laid out on the board in front of us. And that's because today I didn't want to talk about strategy uh, or you know troop movement or things like that as far as the game goes. But instead, I wanted to focus on something that uh, we all have in the back of our minds, and that is how long Axis and Allies can take to play. And this is true no matter what version you're playing. So I thought I'd create a little video of some hints and some tips and some things uh, that you might want to try if you want to speed your game up a, a little bit. Now, just full disclosure here, uh, this is a long game, and nothing that you do is going to allow you to play a game, a competitive game, let me correct that, a competitive game of Axis and Allies in like an hour. But my thought is that if we take a few cost or a few time saving measures, we may be able to reduce the time it takes to play a competitive game, you know, by 10%, 20%, maybe even 30%. And when you're talking about a game that lasts hours and hours, you know, 20 to 30% is still pretty significant. So the first thing. Uh, that I did when thinking about what I wanted to talk through in this video is all of the little things in Axis and Allies that you don't really think about, but they take time. Let me give you an example of that. It can take a lot of time to dig the pieces out of your little piece bag or wherever you're keeping your pieces in um, as you're pulling out what you want to buy and placing it on the board and things like that. Not really something you think about, you just kind of accept it and do it, but think about how many times in a game do you do that? And now if you're playing a standard game, let's say you've got five players, multiply that by five. How much time can we now save uh, five people every turn shaving, you know, 30 seconds to a minute off their turn? It starts, it's small, but it starts to add up. One of the things that I used to do, and in this version of the game I currently have this set up, is I went ahead and took all the pieces and I put them, uh, pieces for each nation, in their own distinctive uh, kind of plastic bag. That way we don't have to root bet uh, between pieces of different countries, at least the countries are sorted out. And it's a good idea for each player to have a little bit of room off to the side that they can uh, kind of pull out some of the units that are used more frequently, you know, maybe Russia just has a couple, you know, handful of infantry sitting out in front of it. Germany probably has a good variety of a number of things. Um, England and the U.S. maybe have more naval units out of their bag or out of whatever container you're using to hold them, just at the ready. And it's, it's good if they have enough room, like, at the table that they can do that without interfering with anything else. Now, one thing that I like about Axis and Allies 1914 is that they actually uh, provide you with individual boxes for each country. And I have found that that is an even more efficient way than having the bags. And I'm actually here in the very near future going to see if I can acquire some small boxes uh, that I can use to store my pieces for Axis and Allies 1942 Second Edition. Uh, big enough for the pieces and for the little placement markers that I've got here, but small enough that I can fit them all in the box, just like an Axis and Allies 1914. Another thing that you might do to speed up your gameplay, and I know this is a transition uh, that the game makers have been making, have been doing recently, uh, is to do away with handing out the physical money, you know, the physical paper money, and. For the longest time, I was a fan of having that because I like to have it in front of me. I like to be able to quickly remember, okay, here's how much money I have. But after considering it more thoroughly, I think that keeping track of it on paper, like on an actual sheet of paper, makes a lot more sense. It's a lot more efficient. You don't have to constantly make change. That's something that I found in my games with some of my friends is that we spend a lot of time making change and, okay, well, I want to buy this, but I'll have $2 left over, but I only have a 5 Okay, let me give you this, and somebody, you know, hands a couple dollars back. And again, this is not something that takes a ton of time on a one-time basis, but think about how many times you do that in a game. 
multiply that by or how many times how many turns you take um, multiply that by five um, as how many turns everybody takes in a game and then how many times does somebody need to have change made does somebody need to pass over that money and do that sort of thing and then recount and you know do all of this stuff you can save some time if you keep track of it on paper now another thing that you can do to speed up your access and allies game is and this is probably the biggest time saver in my opinion plan ahead and you know that seems really simple oh yeah of course i want to plan ahead but I've, I've been surprised over the years at how many people don't do it. They'll wait until the player before them goes because the player before them might do something that completely changes their, their strategy and their take. And that's true, and there's always going to be a little bit of that, but think about how much that player's turn really impacts you. And if you can anticipate what your opponent's probably going to do, that's going to help a lot. Like, we have talked in past videos about the uh, German-Soviet border, as an example. And the move the Soviets are likely to do on the first turn, you know, come in here, come in here in this game. Well, Germany doesn't have to wait until the Soviet Union has taken its first turn to think about what it needs to do in response. Now, maybe the Soviet Union does something totally radical, and unexpected, and then Germany might need to step back and rethink. But assuming that the Soviet Union does something typical, even if it's you know between uh, between you know two or three possible moves um, that are very likely, if Germany anticipates that, it doesn't need to sit and think and ponder and pine over. Well, what should I do? What should I build? It knows. Oh, Russia is doing this. This is how I'm going to respond. And it also helps uh, for all of the, and this is true of, you know, well, that's true of all the powers, and this is what I'm about to say is also true for all of them. It helps when you keep your national goals in mind. So what I mean by that is, okay, let's continue to use the German-Russian example. Russia did something unexpected to Germany's turn. But if Germany has some... Uh, large-scale, you know, overarching strategic goals. Okay, I'm going to take Moscow. That's my goal. And to do that, it's going to be extremely helpful if I have caucus. And, you know, maybe one or two other little goals like that. Regardless of what Russia does, these are my strategic priorities. I need to defend from England. I need to do whatever in North Africa. And I need to do this against the Soviet Union. And then... Russia might do something, it might set you back a turn or two, but now you're thinking about things along your own timeline. You're thinking about, okay, what should I do to achieve my objectives? And it's still important to take into account what all the other countries are doing, but it becomes uh, far less important to, oh my gosh, they did, they attacked one territory I wasn't expecting, it throws my entire plan, uh, you know, upside down, now I've got to change everything. Um, it allows you the flexibility to continue to adapt while at the same time not constantly having to rethink everything. And I found that, more than anything else, takes a ton of time in this game, constantly rethinking, constantly conferring. Um, you know, now, it is important to talk through things with your allies, especially if you're playing on the allied side because they need to coordinate more than the axis. But it's also important to be confident in what you're doing. Just to, when you're talking to uh, your partners in this game, to, be, to remain focused. Okay, what is it that we need to decide? What theater of the war are we looking at? Is that gonna affect any other theater? And then of course you can take those into account. But what is our focus? What are we trying to decide? And take things one step at a time. Don't try to plan out turn six when you're on turn two because there are a lot of things that could happen in between uh, those two turns that are going to modify what you need to do. Now, that doesn't mean completely changing your objectives unless, you know, something goes terribly, terribly wrong and you need to, you know, rethink at a higher level, but it's important not to think too far ahead because you don't want to be locked into a rigid strategy as 
the situation on the board unfolds, but it is important to have those overarching strategic objectives. Um, so those are some things that I believe will help speed up our various Axis and Allies games. I think they're pretty well, uh, they can be applied across different versions. There's nothing specific about 1942 Second Edition. Um, I just had the map for revised up the last time, and I've had a number more videos on 1914 than I think any other version, so I figured using 1942 would be a nice illustration for this video. If you have any uh, tips about speeding up your Axis and Allies game, any comments about this, things that you think would work well but you want to build on, uh, things that you're just not quite sure if they'd work as well as I've illustrated here, or things that you might be a little confused on um, about things that I've talked about, please leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you would go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That way I know, hey, this is the sort of video that people are interested in. Um, I can think about making some more along these lines. I would appreciate it, and I hope you all enjoyed this video.